What's up guys, Ebert here with Howard Canucks, and this is gonna be a different video because I kinda of wanted to change things up a little bit. So I was just cleaning my closet the other day and I came across this laptop. It's the XPS 15 L502X. At least that's what I think it's called. Yep, L520X, I nailed it. So this laptop has a special place in my heart and I wanna kick things off with how it got me through high school because I edited my first short film on this machine. Um, it actually was an inspiration for me to get into gaming and sort of technology and things like that. And this was the first laptop that I used to edit the first Hardware Canucks video. So if you want to go back and check that out, by all means. The specs on this thing are pretty outdated for 2021 standards. So I think it has a Core i7-2670QM quad-core processor with hyper-threading, uh, eight gigabytes of RAM, and a spinning hard drive and a discrete graphics card from NVIDIA. I think it was the GT525M. I have to boot this thing up to see if I validate those specs correctly. But we're gonna see how it fares in 2021. I'm gonna see if it boots, see what works, what doesn't work, and just take a trip down memory lane and see how this thing still fares uh, with today's standards. So let's dive in, but first a quick look from our sponsor. Play your games the right way with the much improved Virtuoso RGB Wireless XT with Bluetooth support, fantastic swivel hinges, deeper ear cushions, tactile controls with USB-C charging, a beefy microphone to step up your comms game, and awesome wireless sound reproduction. Check it out below. Well, here it is guys. This is the XPS L502X. Now, it has aged quite a bit as you can see. I believe that's some coffee stains and it, it has gotten dirty. Opening it up and... Well, uh, yeah, it is it is a lot dirtier than I thought it would, but that's okay because what I'm gonna do is actually clean this up before I start operating on this. So I'm gonna you know, get into the keyboard, take off some debris and whatnot, clean the screen, give it a nice little wipe down, and let's get to it. You know what's funny guys, if you leave your laptop stickers on the surface for too long, it's uh, it's gonna make a tan, it's gonna create a tan on the surface and yeah, this is something that I cannot unsee for the rest of my life, depending on how long I get to keep this. Okay, so I cleaned up the laptop and it certainly looks a lot better than when I brought it into the studio. So a couple things that I did before I even touched this thing was obviously to charge it up to see if there's any battery left, but we're gonna find that out. So I'm gonna power this on and there's nothing going on. So I guess the battery is dead. So that means I would have to rely on AC power to get this thing up and running. So let's see if we can uh, find one. I, I do remember bringing the power adapter. So let me go get that. Okay, so this is it. This is the AC power adapter. Uh, it's one of those connectors with the blue LED that showcases. I'm still, I'm pretty sure some laptops still have these. I think Dell still offers them. But let's plug this in and see if it turns on. So one of the cool things I like about this laptop is that the ports are located at the back. So you have HDMI, mini display ports, and a bunch of other cool things, including the power connector. And that's amazing because now you just have to plug it in at the back for easier cable management, if I can find it. So that way you don't have a lot of things sort of, you know, cluttering up your left and right hand side. So this was great design. Now I do see the battery LED blinking. So that means that it is accepting power. So I guess right now it's just a matter of turning this on and seeing if it works. So here we go. You ready? All right. Oh, I hear stuff. I hear the keyboard. Ooh, oh, man, the old Dell LED, the, 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 the Dell logo. Oh, what's going on here? Well, clearly, there is no hard drive, so I don't know what happened there. Oh, actually, I do remember. I had to swap out or to remove the SSD from this to transfer the data from that to my desktop PC that I built, my first desktop PC, because I had data and all that stuff, so I never thought of putting it back. I should have, but uh, that's okay. I'm just, I just have to find a new SSD somewhere here in the studio and uh, pop this thing open, install it, and then uh, maybe install Windows. And, and take it from there. Now, getting inside the XPS 15, well, at least this particular model was a bit of a challenge because these three screws here will give you access to the memory modules, but unfortunately not the hard drive. Uh, now, 
with traditional laptops, you obviously have screws around the perimeter, you open them and the bottom panel comes off and you have instant access to all the stuff. But in this case, it's difficult because what you have to do is remove the battery and then access the screws, remove those and then open the laptop and basically come over here. As you can see, I'm going to zoom in and you're going to find those little clippers or something like that. You basically use a flathead screwdriver and pop that over there, over there and over there. And this panel, this entire keyboard panel or this palmist area should come off and the two and a half inch hard drive bay should be over here. So I'm going to carefully disassemble this. And so wish me luck. I found a few here, but the problem is that these are data center SSDs. So they're definitely not going to work. I know I might have a few here. Now, don't judge me guys. This is a headphone or headset cover, but I've obviously stored it with some RAM modules. Like I said, I got to improvise for stores. Uh, so, okay, I've, I have a few here. There's the A data SSD. There's this Toshiba drive. This one I know is dead. It's not gonna work. We'll leave these as options. All right, so we're gonna go through these closets. Nope, that's a mess. Oh, that's also a mess, but uh, wait, hold on. That should work. It's the Intel 545 series SSD. So this, yeah, let's go with this. It should be fast and we'll, uh, we'll hope to see if we can get this inside the XPS. Now I want to talk about a few things that this laptop offered that were a game changer to me personally. The first being the fact that it comes with a removable battery. This was so cool because I remember actually having two or three of these removable batteries in my backpack. So I was quickly able to swap them in and out while having power on the go without a problem. The second was the fact that some third party manufacturers were able to offer uh, a secondary hard drive caddy uh, for this uh, CD drive or this removable CD drive uh, for the XPS laptop because this actually uses a SATA interface. So it's easier for users to add a second storage drive to the laptop to expand um, their library and things like that. So realistically, when it comes to upgradability and accessibility, I think the XPS was pretty amazing uh, at the time. Now, sure, this was a very thick laptop. I mean, uh, the thickness by itself was over an inch and it almost weighs about seven pounds. So it was definitely not the most portable machine by any stretch of imagination, but I still loved it. All right, so day two of this setup process for the XPS 15. Now, uh, Windows 10 installs just fine, except there were a few hiccups. The first thing is the trackpad didn't work, so I had to use an external mouse to navigate through the setup UI to get that installed. The second thing is obviously finding drivers because the Wi-Fi card obviously doesn't work. Uh, so I have to download or find the drivers uh, for this laptop, install it, and then make sure that Wi-Fi works. Although that's also kind of TBD. I'm not sure how that's gonna work out when I install these drivers because currently I am installing the chipset drivers for this laptop, which brings me to my next point, And that is Windows 10 isn't officially supported on the XPS 15 L502X. So, I'm kind of gambling on installing the drivers from Windows 8, which is what I was able to find on Dell's official website. So fingers crossed, I'm able to install the graphics drivers, the chipset drivers, the Bluetooth drivers, drivers for the SD card reader to see if it all works out. So let's see where it goes. All right, so it's day three with this laptop and so far things have been going kind of okay. So let me explain to you what works. Uh, the keyboard still functions just fine. Battery still stays on for about a couple hours, which is still pretty respectable for a laptop this age. Uh, but the trackpad still doesn't work, which is funny because the newer XPS laptops still have issues with trackpads. 
I think trackpad is just a thing with XPS laptops, which is really funny. Last year, Dell rolled out a BIOS update for this laptop, and unfortunately, it didn't really solve a lot of the issues. I also wanna mention that Windows was still updating the older drivers that was installed on this laptop, or at least that's what I got from Dell's official website. Um, I also wanna mention that the GT540M from NVIDIA wasn't being recognized by some applications like DaVinci Resolve, and um, sometimes, you know, when I tried to launch Shadow or Rise of the Tomb Raider, it just froze. So gaming on this is a complete no-go. It still just won't work, which is, you know, it's fine because this is a 10-year-old laptop. Now, I did run some performance tests to see how it compares to some of the modern hardware that's already out there. So as you can see, when I ran Cinebench and Blender and Handbrake, obviously the 2670QM quad-core processor is really, really slow. It obviously, it's no match for what's already out there. So if you're, you know, if you're still using one of these right now, you, it might be the best solution to upgrade to something newer because the performance improvement over the past 10 years has been substantial. You know, for day-to-day -day tasks like web browsing and watching videos, this thing still gets a job done. Speaking of which, I have to appreciate how good the display is. Now, sure, the resolution is 1366 by 768, but when I ran my display analysis test, um, it actually was a lot better than the HP Omen 16 that I just recently reviewed, which is really weird. I really like the sound system on this laptop because you've got two front-facing speakers and a subwoofer at the bottom, and there's great depth to the bass response, which sometimes distorts, but overall, it actually sounds a lot better some, compared to some of the modern laptops that I've looked at. So that was really surprising to me. The keyboard is still amazing. I've written so many papers on this laptop. I've gamed on it. I mean, it's still pretty much practically brand new, and there's good feedback. Travel distance is great. Um, I would still comfortably use this to write out scripts and just do general tasks. It's really that good. I'm still gonna keep this for as long as I can. Um, and hopefully, I don't know if I'll be able to update this to Windows 11. That's probably not gonna happen. But at the end of the day, this was just a fun project for me. I wanted to see what this 10 year old laptop can do in 2021. And as far as I can tell, the only thing I can possibly do is just, um, consume media with this thing, and that's about it. I can't game on it. Obviously, I can't edit videos on it. But um, yeah, 10 years has been a long run. I still love this. So that pretty much concludes this video. I hope you guys were able to have a little bit of fun watching something a little bit different. It's still laptop content, but like I said, I, I really just wanted to play around with my old machine to see how it fares up in 2021. Uh, and if you've owned one of these laptops or if you still are using it, how has it been treating you so far? And um, yeah, just let us know your thoughts about it. I'm Ebor with Hardware Canucks. Thank you so much for watching. Um, stay safe. And I don't know if spend responsibly is the right term to say in this video, but I'm still gonna say it if you're shopping around for new laptops anyway. So here it goes, spend responsibly. And I'll see you guys in the next one.